Hello, everyone. Welcome back and thanks for joining us for our user group panel with Conrad Electronic. A billion dollar family business headquartered in Germany, Conrad Electronic has stood for technology and electronics since 1923. It offers both B2B and B2C customers a sourcing platform with a wide and in-depth range of more than 5 million products and professional services on Conrad.de. I'm very pleased to uh, welcome Ale Strabek, Chief Digital and Disruption Officer at Conrad Electronic to the session today. Thanks for joining us, Alish. Thanks for the invitation and hello everybody. So Alish, before we get started, it'd be uh, great to hear about Conrad Electronic and your role in the organization. So as a chief digital, I'm responsible for everything around technology. So IT, e-commerce, everything we have to do before data, um, customer intelligence, and so on. As a, as a disruption officer, I'm responsible for our new business models, uh, like, for example, IoT platform uh, or our B2B marketplace, uh, but also for digitalization of our internal processes and uh, automatization many of our activities that we are doing. Right, okay. So could you tell us a little bit about the company's goals when it comes to digital transformation? I mean, what did you intend to set out uh, and achieve? Um, I guess specifically, you know, what did this look like from a customer experience perspective? And, and you know, how did this look in terms of back-end processes? So our company already 20 years ago started with first web shop in Germany. However, approximately four years ago, we recognized that we need to bring the customer experience completely next level with clear focus on the, on the B2B business. And um, uh, for this reason, we heavily invest in, uh, uh, in improvement and uh, rebuilding of our uh, e-commerce and uh, many other systems with the, uh, with the target that we will offer our customers uh, easy and fast experience uh, for uh, comprehensive uh, task because we are saying over selling over uh, five six million products uh, especially by b2b customers uh, a lot of uh, purchasing processes are complex more complex like by b2c so the question was uh, how we can uh, Let's say, uh, auto, how we can from one side improve the customer's experience, uh, offer similar B, like B2C experience in areas where, where the customers are looking for that. But from one other side, how we can make sure that also for the B2B relevant uh, uh, features and topics uh, or website uh, and any other digital solutions are uh, very fast, so target was up to three seconds, are uh, user-friendly, uh, are able to cope with the millions of products and uh, data and everything. So this was, uh, this was our key directions from the customer perspective uh, in the last uh, three, four years. Right, okay. So I understand a key part of that digital transformation was empowering uh, your suppliers, warehouse staff, and other internal teams as well with data in, in a timely manner so they can provide customers with better products uh, to meet their demands. Tell us how you have kind of approached implementing that. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, to achieve this uh, experience, uh, we decided to become a, a cloud-first company, which is quite big step for a company um, 97 years old on the, uh, on the market. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the last four years, basically, we move completely out from, uh, uh, from on-premise uh, to uh, everything in the cloud. And one of the, with the exception of our SAP backend, which is still on-premise. And one of the biggest part of this uh, transformation was uh, to building uh, uh, a completely new big data platform where we move basically all the company data. And in the first step, we make them available, this data to all of our employees. So we call this democratization of the data because important part of the digital transformation is uh, data-driven decisions. And in the company where many of our employees are working for many years, this is a little bit of revolutions because usually you hear in this type of companies, well, we are doing this already 10 years, so we know how to do it. So we don't need to 
uh, be data driven. And then when this start to work and then people learn how to create their own reports, we are using Google Cloud, so they also learn how to use big query analysis, minimum some of them. Uh, then we start to open this also to our uh, uh, partners. And first uh, group of the partners are the market, uh, marketplace sellers. So we have a Germany marketplace uh, for the B2B products, which we would like to expand the next years uh, around uh, the Europe. And they have also now uh, all of the reports uh, um, from our big data platform uh, addressing their needs uh, to make better decision, faster decision, what kind of products would like to sell by us, what is the product data quality, what, what are the prices and so on. And now, as a next step, we are uh, also opening uh, this uh, reporting system again with the different type of data to our B2B key account customers. And uh, as a next step, uh, we'll come uh, suppliers. And in, in many cases, um, our suppliers are also our marketplace sellers because part of the products we are buying from them and the rest they are selling. And they are also our customers yeah, because they are buying from us some other technical products. So basically our target is to, to create one data uh, platform with, uh, with a global reporting where they can see all type of data which are relevant for them uh, to making business with us. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm convinced that this type of... Uh, step will heavily increase and improve the cooperation between us or customers or sellers and also uh, or uh, suppliers right before we i guess talk about some of the obvious impacts that you might have seen from you know with this quite revolutionary approach i'd be quite keen to and i'm sure a lot of other folks would be keen to hear about certainly with an organization, as you said, 97 years old and been in the market for a long place, what were some of the cha challenges in trying to integrate this to you, into your legacy infrastructure? Yeah, I will say we had uh, three types of challenges. First, convince the organization that cloud is the right decision and the cloud first uh, is, uh, is the way how we need to move forward. Uh, the second challenge was uh, to get the data out of our backend systems, especially in SAP, uh, which we have uh, ten year, where we have a ten years uh, old uh, release. Uh, this was definitely a technically difficult task, but we managed. But not only move this out, but our target was uh, to build a big data platform where all of the systems are sending the data and. Uh, every other systems are taking data out. So basically we would like, uh, the target was to take out this, this spider connection between the different application and backend, cut all of these connections and, uh, and connect this uh, everything to the big data uh, and move the data, move just the data back and forward without needed to do every times different connection between the backends, but also between the middleware and, and front end. And uh, this was quite uh, this was quite a challenging task, yeah? um, where uh, we need to apply a lot of historical knowledge because some of the connection was made 20 years ago or 25 years ago. Nobody know it anymore how they work, or only one person know it how they work and so on. But uh, but we manage, and uh, uh, and now everything uh, is, uh, um, is is in the big data and. Uh, as I said, our employees are working. And the last challenge which we had was, of course, with the uh, digital mindset. So how I can use the data, uh, how I can, uh, for my decisions, uh, how I can create by myself the report so I don't need to wait for a controlling department or some other departments, they will create uh, the reports. But also there, uh, we move forwards. Last week, we have our big data community. It was like 80 people from the company, uh, which are now really discussing not only the creation reports, but they are discussing how I can with big query do specific analysis. And, and even they are now discussing topics like machine learning on KI. So, so, so there we see movements. Obviously, there's still a lot of space for improvement. Yeah. So starting to gain traction at least. So, I mean, I think you've probably covered some of this, but I mean, are there any standout impacts that you've 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 noticed immediately as a result of taking this new approach? Definitely, um, we see um, from the decision point of view, 
uh, we see much better results um, in the sense of uh, sales or, for example, conversion rate in the shop. Yeah. Um, with uh, new data sources, uh, which we have in the in the big data platform, we are also able to improve our machine learning algorithm. Uh, we are also imp Im uh, able to improve, for example, our search uh, or our recommendation engines. So, so all of these are delivering uh, better results. Yeah. And uh, we move also to let's say, to the test organization that uh, um, the people are defining hypotheses uh, and based on the data, and they do a lot of tests to find out uh, uh, how the hypotheses is wo are working. And this is uh, something new. Um, many years ago, Conrad was very keen on the testing, yeah, and then somehow it disappeared from the organization. But in the last two, three years, we again built this uh, culture and uh, things that uh, we are much more agile and uh, uh, and better focused uh, in, uh, in the sense of that on the, the final implementations, what we are doing are mostly features which are really needed from the customer's point of view and delivering uh, higher benefits. Right. Yeah, so a couple of the points you touched on there, certainly from Agility's perspective and the customer experience. I mean, could you tell us a bit about, in your experience, the importance of having a kind of open, headless, API-driven, modern solution? Um, this was a, uh, API um, architecture was was a, or, or a very important pillar for or, uh, for our architecture which we started uh, last uh, three years, and uh, uh, we were even in that uh, going in the directions that uh, uh, we defined uh, in our architectures uh, different projects using the same middleware. For example, we have uh, one CMS for countries in the DAC regions, and we have another CMS, Bloomreach, for all other countries. Yeah? And with this, we were forcing the organizations to really uh, implement the APIs because the target was that all of the front ends should con consume the same services. Uh, and, uh, um, and with this, uh, we could be faster and much more effective. And uh, so we move, uh, I would say, these ideas from the papers because everybody's talking about API architecture. But if you look really in details, you find out that uh, there is not so many APIs that are working properly in in praxis because the people were uh, forced uh, to uh, to implement everything uh, via the APIs. And thanks to that, we have now much more possibilities uh, to be faster, for example, in the new front ends. So we have a dedicated solution for key account customers, or we have uh, uh, some connection with our big customers via APIs when they are consuming our data and sending us orders back. Yeah? Uh, we are able to uh, implement much faster new features in our websites because uh, the APIs are there, but also for, the, uh, for our internal people. Yeah? So we, are, uh, we create some uh, special solutions for our sales teams or for our customer care, which is consuming basically the same data what the web shops are consuming, but every, uh, everything is coming from the same API architecture. So, so in my opinion, this is extremely crit critical point, especially if you have uh, more countries, if you have a different uh, type of customers. So like we have B2C, B2B, we have uh, stores where we also develop uh, special terminals for the stores. So we have different type of business models, different type of uh, more countries. Uh, then I see uh, API, open API architecture as absolutely critical for uh, success in the, uh, on the, in the digital space. Sure. And did that form part of any of your decision making to, to choose Bloomreach as a, as a, as a solution? Oh well, yeah, this was one of the reasons why we chose a few years ago Bloomreach as a, uh, as a part of our architecture because uh, uh, your uh, architecture, is, uh, architecture is also uh, based on the APIs. It's uh, the connectivities between the front ends on the Bloomreach and our middleware uh, is um, very nature. Uh, it's uh, um, the system uh, is working very well in uh, in the Google Cloud environment, which we are using for all of the technologies. Yeah, so uh, it's also 
consuming uh, other APIs, not only OR, but also from the services which are coming di direct from the Google Cloud. Yeah. So uh, it was a good choice, and um, um, you should continue to develop uh, this uh, API architecture in the future because, uh, minimum from our experience, this is the key driver for agility, for speed uh, in development, uh, but also for creativity with the new features because uh, uh, you, you are, the, the, or developers are not so much depend on other teams or other departments uh, to, uh, to from, develop the data from the backend or develop the features from the backend. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's very, it was very good. Yeah. Great. Yeah, thankfully, I mean, everybody needs to hang on after this without a doubt because we will be hearing from our product teams uh, with regards to um, roadmap and some of the new features we've coming down. So it kind of speaks very well to the future development that Blue Image is looking to focus on. I'd like to touch on a, a point you raised earlier about that, um, I guess, pivoting from their kind of B2, uh, you know, B2C to B2B kind of world. I mean, over the past few years, we've seen how evolution of B2B brands create more B2C online experiences for their customers, um, you know, including content personalization, uh, search terms, you know. Um, what experience did you go out to achieve for your B2B customers? Yeah, well, our benefit is that we have also B2C business. Um, and uh, for example, Germany uh, is our web shop, uh, one of the top 10 web shops in Germany. Yeah. So, so we have quite good experience from the B2C business and uh, we utilize this experience also for the B2B uh, because as you are, uh, you are absolutely right uh, that in a number of features uh, and experience, the B2B users are moving more B2C direction. However, uh, they are, there's there's number of specific uh, features uh, um, and uh, which need to be developed for the B2B customers. Yeah? And uh, for example, if you look on the customer journey, um, when we when we look in this uh, part of uh, looking for the what kind of products I would like to have, yeah, then search play absolute critical role. Uh, but also search with the with a lot of filters with very with a lot of technical details because the decision process by the b2b customers uh, is much more complex like by b2c yeah. so they and uh, and they are looking for very very specific uh, technical products in in our case uh, where uh, the the combination between the the quality of the search quality of the data and quality of the filters is absolutely critical or for example uploading the list of the products. Yeah. Uh, we, also, we also create a, a machine learning system in backend, which is uh, now trying to match the customer's list uh, where they are usually are not using or, or product uh, descriptions, or they are not using or product um, numbers, but they are using their own products numbers, or they are using some other descriptions. So how we can match uh, uh, this data with our data. So this is one. Uh, this is the uh, the next important uh, feature, which is very specific for the B two B. Or in the after sales process, uh, in the my account, so online sales services. Yeah. The the customers, the B two B customers, are not looking only for the status of the orders and uh, where is the order, which is also extremely important for B two C. But for example, uh, they want to define which persons should receive the, uh, the invoice um, that the accounting department will get also the invoice or they would like to apply the company structure who can buy what and who can see what uh, in uh, in our system yeah? and uh, there's a number of other uh, important features when you are not uh, typical for the b2c but they are extremely important for the b2b so so we try to do the best from both worlds. Yeah. So in some areas, use the B2C experience. In some specific areas where the, uh, where the B2B requirements are, are different to build the B2B experience in, in the front ends in our web shops. Yeah. Sounds easy, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, look, I'd be I'd be remiss if we didn't address the elephant in the room, COVID nineteen. Um, I'm, I hate to say it. So we know that the pandemic has accelerated e commerce to new heights. You know, as people were stuck indoors and ordering online, um, increased exponentially, uh, and and a lot of us are actually still doing it now. 
what impact did this have on your business? I mean, did you need to change any ways of working to accommodate this upswing? Yeah, there's definitely a huge elephant in the room. Yeah, and uh, uh, this has, uh, in some other, very negative impact uh, on our lives. Yeah, so we have a lot of private limitations. Yeah, um, the kids were not in the schools, but also in the business or stores were closed. Uh, uh, but as you said, uh, there's also a lot of potential. Uh, we see much more potential as the, as the negatives. Yeah. Uh, one is uh, that uh, the customers heavily moved to the online, but not only to the online, but they are also now looking for much better online experience. Yeah? So uh, they uh, they start to move from, for example, distributors uh, which have old shops uh, um, without upgrades in the last couple of years to much more modern solutions like we are, for example, offering, because they were not able to. Uh, to work with these uh, old-fashioned solutions, or um, they were uh, they were looking for uh, specific products which they were not buying before, or they were uh, the uh, the companies were missing uh, products and were not able to supply uh, the B2B customers. So they were looking for the sourcing platform like we are with hundreds of thousand products, yeah, which. Uh, uh, which can support, I would say, the needs. And there were some very specific activities um, which we didn't uh, saw it before. For example, uh, with the a lot of people in the home offices, yeah, the co uh, company start to ask us, can we uh, apply the B2B discounts, what we have, uh, the quantities discounts, yeah, and can we put uh, can we create an account for all of the employees, but the employees will order the B2C customers from the home. Yeah? Uh, the goods will be delivered to the home, and if there's a necessity for returns, this will be everything organized in the same way like B2C. Because they were saying all classical distributors can uh, supply only pallets to us, uh, to our headquarters, but what we should do with the pallets of the new notebooks in the headquarters is if nobody is in the headquarters. Yeah. Or um, customers groups like educations or state institutions, yeah? uh, especially in Germany, but I, I believe also in many other countries, uh, in the COVID-19 time became visible that uh, the digitalization, uh, um, there's a really big gap of the digitalization uh, in, in the school area, for example. And this type of customers start to make orders by us, but but because they they have not this technical knowledge like the typical B2B customers, yeah, we, we need to think about it, how we can make it much more easier to use the journey for them, how we can how we can create a special solution, the full solution for them, that we will simplify for them the decision process, what kind of products they need, what kind of tablets they need, what kind of notebooks they need, what kind of Wi-Fi they need. Yeah? So, so typically B2B customers uh, usually know what exactly they want or they have a good knowledge. Uh, so so for, for this type of customers, uh, uh, we, need, uh, we were recreating and we are still recreating because the demand is continuing from this side. Uh, the new user experience, for example, via chat, uh, uh, how they can uh, how they can uh, um, make the orders or how can they make the right decisions without necessity to really understand uh, to go through all of this hundred of notebooks which we are offering. Yeah? So so this was uh, so this is also for us a huge opportunity because uh, uh, the customers there's a new a lot of new customers groups uh, uh, which need technology products, but we need to change the user experience and we need to be better in the user experience yeah, to make sure that also this type of customers will, uh, will buy by us. And on the end, the next topic was also with our IoT platform. So we are developing since three years the IoT platform. And, um, um, and all of a sudden, this became an extremely important topic for many of our MRO customers because they need to implement health needs in the buildings. They need to have a measurements, uh, what kind of fresh air is in the, uh, is in, uh, the building. Uh, uh, they need to 
temperature, they need to have a temperature measurements by people. Uh, they need to have automatization in the building, uh, opening windows and stuff like this. And something what was IoT was still now more in the industry or in the uh, in the production, but it was less less in this um, uh, by our typical mid-sized MRO customers. But also there, they now wake up, um, they are asking for support, they want to implement uh, different use cases uh, with the with our IoT platform, but also there is a question how we can, in the online experience, offer the product and services together to offer them easy solution which they can uh, just order and start to use without uh, deep knowledge without um, uh, needed for some specific support and so on. And, and this is one of the key tasks what our people have now, simplification uh, uh, the technology in cre uh, for creation specific solution for the specific customers groups because we see there's a demand coming from the different direction which was not before COVID-19. Yeah, well, some incredibly unique uh, opportunities and challenges to overcome as a result of this pandemic. Thanks, Olis. That's uh, that's very insightful. Uh, look, just before we end things there, uh, if you were, and I'm sure this is a question you get all the time, if you were you know, able to provide one piece of advice to other companies looking to embark on a similar journey uh, and improve their customers' digital experience, what would it be? So my, my key advice will be, Speed is everything. So there's no time to wait. So don't spend too much time with uh, creation, a, sp a whole holistic strategy, or creation the holistic architecture yeah, uh, yeah, for our technologies. Just define quickly the next steps, uh, define quickly what kind of key technology pillars uh, you would like to have, uh, my recommendation will be to find the good combination between modern software as a service uh, um, and uh, some PCs where you like to invest in your own development, combine, combine this and start and start and move this to the customers yeah, with MVP and then further develop, learn, uh, test, scale, because uh, you will find out that uh, uh, half of your strategy is wrong and half of your technologies ideas will not work immediately. So it's uh, save the time because uh, the speed, uh, the customers are not waiting, the expectation of the customers are high, uh, the competitors are moving very fast, uh, especially these two competitors uh, with, with A on the begin, yeah, one from China and one from US. Yeah. Uh, they want to move in Europe heavily in the B2B space. So, uh, so, you, so don't wait. Uh, uh, I, I would say there's a five minutes to 12 yeah, and start to do something. Well, Alesh, thanks very much. Um, I think we've run out of time. Incredibly grateful for your time. I really appreciate that. Extremely insightful. Um, I think we'll be moving into the uh, roadmap Q&A now. I believe those links are going to be just down below. Um, Alesh, thanks again. Really appreciate that. You're welcome.